Good afternoon, people. It's a lovely Sunday at the Dragon. I rode my scrambler up to the stow, switching over to the Aprilia loaner uh, on loan from our sponsors. Not really, but we'll call it that. Full disclosure, the Aprilia dealership in Georgia, southeast motorcycle motoplex owner gave me this bike for a couple of weeks to check it out get some content see what my thoughts were digging it i'm gonna run over here and get some fuel and i'm gonna drive across and go get lunch over at 129 hub Okay, thank you. <clears throat> See y'all. All right, full tank of gas. See if I can get over and get lunch and get back before the weather system gets into the area. It still looked like it was a couple hours out, but radars can be delayed and things can move faster than you think. All kinds of fun stuff. <clears throat> yeah, the forecast for today was like 80%. But the hourly shows that it's mostly concentrated in a certain couple hours of the day and I think it actually dropped the percentage dropped down some First run through, you know, just scouting it out. Passing the half a mile mark here, and this is a little straight the easiest section of the road and I'm speeding the speedometer is wrong it's in kph and it's out of calibration so you know don't count on that inaccurate it's a little hard left here that a lot of people wreck in it's not really hard but We'll classify it as that since it gives people some trouble. Something about the deceptiveness of it. Passing mile marker one. Now we get into the continuously tight stuff, more or less. Rough patch in the road. Ugh, I picked the wrong line there. It's weird when you're casually riding, how it just kind of throws off your normal lines and things that would normally pull you out on a motorcycle or a car but especially on a bike don't happen and so 
you end up running a little bit weirder lines. Got some spectators coming up on Stonewall. Mile 1.5, top of Stonewall here. Danny boy. Kyle's corner. I'm just wearing like casual gear today and sitting more upright. It's a dark line in the road. It's a little concerning. I don't remember seeing that the last time I came through. I don't know how old this is. Some scratch marks there. So I'm trying to stay sort of off of it. Sometimes you can tell if it was a motorcycle, you'll see a little tire track in the middle of it, um, which usually doesn't last very long because that means that the tire gets coated with whatever the fluid is and they go down in short order. Now, I don't see that in this one. It also means that it probably can go on longer because the quantity of fluid that the vehicle can hold before it runs out when it develops a leak like this with a you know four-wheel vehicle is typically more fluid you know, with the motorcycles there's only so much that they'll hold rough pavement Crossing over that line. Gravity cavity. Mile marker three. Rough pavement. Going past picnic now. There used to be like a little picnic table sign right there for like camping, I guess. So we started calling picnic table and it's no longer a camping no camping is allowed anywhere from the state line down to the lake past the lakes um, they used to not discourage it i guess you could say not really promote it but they would allow it but a few people started parking down on the lakes for weeks at a time and you know buses and vans and stuff and it was I guess getting to be a problem and since the, the park service owns all the land on both sides of the roads Great Smoky Mountains National Park is on that side right there this is the border and the other side it was donated to the park as a conserver, conservator conservancy so for animals and it's not national park land but it's still owned by them I guess you could say yeah that dark that fluid on the road is kind of freaking me out man if I knew how old it was it'd be different but if it's fresh I don't want to dump this loaner bike right in the middle of the lane moves back and forth just a little bit but not much and so it's hard to stick to one side of it I don't like being too close to the yellow unless we're going around these right handers like this gives me a little more visibility both for oncoming traffic to see me and for me to be able to see them 
and then I'll usually tuck in once we start the corner. <clears throat> There's no more benefit basically to being out there. Triple doubles, that's the second of three. And we're going into the third of three, and then we go uphill pretty steep for a second. And then it just suddenly levels off, and we call it the plateau. The French word, the French word. Right here, this real easy right-hander, and then it just levels off, and this next turn down here can get you in a lot of trouble. So you can carry a lot of speed through here. Whether it was the easy turn, easy turn, and all of a sudden there's a hard right. And people blow across the road right there. So be careful. Scratch, scratch marks right there. Mm -hmm. Rough pavement on the right, rough pavement on the left. You got to kind of zigzag through here. Thank you. <clears throat> Coming up on power lines. It's kind of a double apex here. It's a little rough. The pavement just has ripples to it. It's not broken so much. It's just always been sort of ripply. In the rhythm section here, it's just some sort of medium, right, left, right, left, back and forth stuff. And we come down onto Spectator Alley and Mile Marker 6 down here. Nobody's down here spectating today. Marker six is a dip on the right. Try to stay out to the left on a bike. It's hard to miss it on a car. Going down into horseshoe, ripping it. sharp turn caution the exit is tighter than it looks a lot of people have problems here run off the road right there coming up now on mud turn got the whole mud bank on the inside mud getting dragged out into the road and scenic turn where you can see across the, the valley to power lines A couple little easy turns here and then we get into two square pretty tight pairs of right lefts in this direction there's this right lefts in the other direction too isn't it yeah so you gotta sacrifice the first one to get a good run out of this second one here and then do the same thing there's a couple of divots on the road here on the second turn that you got to sort of pick your line around and we got a little straight that leads up to mile marker seven, which is missing on that post there. And then picnic table right here is always a photographer. Now we got guardrail. Kind of a tight turn here. This one, and people go off the end of it into the ditch sometimes on bikes. You can see it's all like fresh dirt there. And then a couple little easy S's and then we got radar turn where the police like to sit. Or a photographer. The pavement is getting rough there. Oh, that dark line on the road just suddenly started again real hard. <laughs> yeah, it was like it stopped and then all of a sudden it just Boom. Had a real sharp beginning again and took back off. A lot of people tend to jump to malicious conclusions, malicious conclusions when it comes to fluids on the road like this, but it's really usually just somebody didn't know their vehicle blew a hose or something developed a leak and they can't know it. It's hard to tell from inside. 
no warning lights come on or anything on some of the older vehicles especially that don't monitor as much stuff um, it's just something we have to deal with once in a while all right coming down near the end near the overlook now this dub triple apex it's like sharp and then it kind of opens up and there's a little medium and then it opens back up and then there's another little medium and then we go into this I guess kind of tricky uh, left right uh, I don't ever had any problems with it but a lot of people like wreck right there so just beware that it can be an issue and then we're coming up on the final pull off on the right here which thank you <clears throat> and now we're coming up on the overlook it's real easy to speed right here it's a chill there's people down here there's kids and pets ain't nobody impressed with your speed and a lot of times the police will sit right here and just shoot right up this hill you see i'm going 40 i'm already speeding and it feels like that's not accurate and it feels like i'm going slow as it is um got a lot of people standing here you know wanting to show and i'm not giving it to them and i would advise you not to either it's not a good place to try to show off all right we're heading on down to the lakes road kind of opens up and has a weird rhythm now and that's why a lot of people i think don't drive this part of it it can be fun and some people argue it'd be but for the most part the reality is there's not as many people on this section of the road most people turn around to overlook or hang out at the overlook there's a couple hard turns like this right here so you'll end up like you know sort of stop and go thing just doesn't have the same rhythm and that's okay it's just the reality of it the fact People have some hard times with some of these turns. This one right here is a little sharper than it looks as you're entering it. And once you're in it, you realize, oh wow, that's even sharper than I thought. And then down here, people get a lot of speed. They're going downhill and they forget that they're downhill and there's a lot of black marks right there. They even built a little berm there to try to stop some of the people from dropping over the edge. But if you hit it with enough speed and you're upright, you're, it's a, practically a jump. All right, coming up on Pearly Gates, we call it this little zigzag. It's got a guardrail, so there is another guardrail, and there's some gates on the right there, so we call it the Pearly Gates, like it's the entrance to heaven when you're going the other way, obviously. And yeah, little rock slide area where they repaved it here. There was a rock slide that kind of tore the road up, and they had to bring equipment up and fix it, and they tore the pavement up, so they repaved this little section here. You'll see a a break right there and goes back to the original pavement which explains the rough pavement on the inside lane down here because they unloaded some big track equipment down at Calderwood power station drove it up here when they rotated it to get around this turn right here it dug in and really tore up the pavement I wish they'd have repaved this turn right here um, but I don't know it's not terrible it's just it's a thing that will affect your uh, line there now we're coming up on Calderwood power station this is a place where cars can be pulling out police can be hanging out so just you know be aware it's a pretty cool little spot if you want to go down in there they got a gate that's like an automated gate that says it closes at three although I've seen it open way past three they'll usually go through and sweep and make sure nobody's down there but it's a little access road that goes down to a power station and sort of a picnic area and there's like a grass runway for alcoa uh, employees and executives and stuff at one time but they don't use it anymore so it's got pretty much covered with goose poop <laughs> there's geese down there and stuff sometimes and there's like an old there used to be a community so there's like a an old church it's got this kind of funky like spanish style to it um, and there's some remnants of foundations of houses and stuff. It's a pretty neat place to check out if you're looking for something to go off and explore. So now we're coming out of the Dragon, Exit the Dragon, starring Lee Bruce. Um, wow, party over here. And uh, yeah, the, the 11 mile proper ends here and we're gonna go across the bridge to uh, Nice. 
uh, Tabcat Bridge, and we got a state trooper here and got somebody pulled over. A Mercedes. So yeah, the it's easy to speed right here. The speed limit's 40 right now. Um, yeah, I see another state trooper up here. Um, so it's just, it's a really easy to sort of come out of all those turns and then come down here and go blowing past these guys. Um, man, there's a lot of dirt there where they pulled out and <laughs> whipped around on people. Um, and then coming this way, you know, you can see it's like a, a mile long sight line and it's just one of those places you got to watch yourself. It's, I don't agree with the speed limit here. It's entrapment. Honestly, there's no reason to go that slow. 40 miles an hour on speed right now. And there's no hazard at all. You could be going easily double this and it wouldn't be unsafe. Um, so it is what it is. Just have to deal with it. Uh, speed limit goes up to 50 up here. Um, and then it's 50 on out to, uh, I think past the end of the lakes. It's always a real nice ride down to here, pretty ride on lakes and complete. 180 change of scenery almost, short of being a desert. It goes from being all in the forest and curvy roads to wide open and straight roads. Um, a lot of mimosa trees down through here. a little popular hangout spot with a couple of covered uh, picnic tables and a deck and there used to be a boat put in here but I think they blocked it off yeah they blocked it off with rocks and stuff um, Still looks pretty good. And I think we're driving fairly north west towards the system that's moving in, so hopefully I'll be able to sort of get out front of it on the way back if it's any kind of real issue. Um, we'll see. a few years ago and shut the road down. So coming up on Foothills Parkway, sorry, Foothills Parkway and um, also the road down to Happy Valley. Top of the world and all that. Those pretty cool places. Happy Valley's got a lot of a uh, community down there and you don't want to be added too hard going through that community those people are not all enthusiasts of our activities and you can say well screw them if they don't like it whatever but they can make our lives difficult if we really antagonize them we don't want to do that it's not worth it just let them have their little spot we got plenty of places to ride right Alright, the rest of this is pretty basic. I might fast forward to the 129. Um, pop in there and get lunch. See y'all there. And here we are, folks. Dip in here and get some lunch. And I'll be back shortly. Uh, 
think I got that camera aimed about right. So I took off from um, 129 Hub, kind of scarfed that food down. It was really good, but had to kind of boogie because the radar showed that storm system moving in, getting real rowdy. A lot of red along the edge of it, and it was a pretty thick, somewhat thick system. It'd probably take a good hour or so to pass. So, scarfed it down and boogied out of there. It's starting to get kind of dark over in there, back behind me. Woo, temperature got real warm right there. That's weird. It's funny the things you feel on a motorcycle. As far as temperature, the air goes, especially. Um, you know, you drive a lot of lakes and you can feel the chill in the air from the water cooling things down. Much more in touch with the environment. When I, I think I'm going to be okay. It looks like it's pretty clear with the way I'm going. So, I should be able to at least get to the store before it starts dumping rain. I don't want to dilly, dilly dally around too long. Tripod BMW. Tire, tire situation or something probably. <clears throat> when I came out, there was two state troopers down here. Looked like they were working pretty solid right tickets you could see uh, some tracks on this from out of the side of the road where they had been pulling out quite frequently and they had just actively pulled somebody over when I came by so I try to be careful not to end up in that situation but I need to get on back before the rain hits and It won't be a minute to the next decent pull off. There's one more here up around this corner, but I don't like it. I don't want them to use it. There's another couple of bikes kind of coming along behind me that are, well, they're caught up now. They're a little faster and he would pull right out in front of them if he pulled over. I really don't want them to use this one, but now I got guys pushing up on me from behind and I don't want them to think I'm being too lazy about the situation.
the traction control system is apparently fighting me. If I'm leaned over and I get on the gas, I don't know if it's predictive or hello or uh, yeah, see it's flashing. And I'm not giving it enough gas to. Oh, I'm on commute. Never mind. Hang on, I gotta switch the drive mode. There we go. Individual. Had it on commute. We've got individual set up to be a little more assertive. I hadn't seen it do that before, so I thought that was kind of odd. Not bad. Thank you. So there's two police. He's saying. He's tapping the roof, giving me a two. Thank you, sir. Might have been a wreck or an incident in here. I know there was two state troopers out the lakes earlier, and I wouldn't think they would just come in here from there to patrol, but maybe they did. Another one flashing his headlights. Might be like a wreck up here or something. Woo! Black marsh across the road right there. We got a car. He's tapping his helmet. Thank you. Another one tapping his head. Yeah, I'd say there must be some kind of incident. People, I mean, it's pretty much a, a given on a weekend that there's going to be police. So it's not something that most people get real carried away with warning oh yeah I see lights up here thank you so the road may be blocked oh no and there's some lights right around this corner here ambulance okay mm. hope he's okay Somebody went down around gravity cavity. Another trooper up in here. They're working in pair today.
taking off in third gear. It's like, man, it's, it's driving like it's in a taller gear. Well, that's because you're in third gear, dummy. All right, see if I can boogie my ass home before this sets in.